this entitled stepmom pretends to be caring in front of her husband. But when he's away, you won't believe the crazy things she gets up to. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamped show. Some backstory. About four years ago now, I was 14 then, 18 now. My brother and I got a bike each from our parents for our birthdays. Our birthdays are 12 days apart. These bikes were $60 from Walmart, and so weren't made with the best parts. I decided that I would make my bike something of a project for me to learn about fixing up bikes. I poured a lot of my own money into this bike, changing the chain, the wheels, the seat, the handlebars, and I had to replace the tubes no less than two times for each wheel. And I learned to do it all with a little bit of help from our local bike shop when I got stuck on something. A little over two years ago, my brother who never rode his own bike decided that I could just have his as a backup if I needed. So just like with my own, I poured so much time and money into getting that bike to be just as good as my main one. All in all, I probably spent $300 on my main bike and maybe $200 to $50 on my backup. I am extremely proud of what I was able to accomplish on them. My father has always wanted the very best of everything, even if we couldn't afford it. He couldn't just have a TV. He needed a $600 TV with Wi-Fi connection. He didn't just need a computer monitor, he needed a $250 curved monitor. This all despite the fact we are often hanging at the edge of an eviction from our house. Now, before you call me a hypocrite for spending my money on the bikes, I will point out that I have my own job and used solely money I had to spare on those bikes. My father hasn't had a job since 2011. My father refuses to go to the doctors to treat his diabetes and blood pressure issues because he believes that all doctors want to do is make him think he is more sick than he is while draining all of his money. We actually had to fight him for two years to go to the doctors just so he could get disability so we could afford groceries and pay the bills instead of just one or the other. Anyways, recently my father has gotten the idea into his head that all he needs to feel better is to start exercising again. While this isn't the worst idea in the world, he is far beyond the point where only exercise can fix his problems. The guy can't even walk in a straight line or stand for more than 20 minutes without getting lightheaded. He has been told on one of the many times we had to rush him to the ER that he has gotten so bad he needs medicine to fix the damage he has done to his body. He is also dealing with kidney failure and needs weekly dialysis, which he doesn't consider in the same league as those evil doctor visits. He is in no shape to be riding a bike, but that didn't stop him from coming to me while I was looking over the back tire of my bike. I crashed like an idiot and the tire warped. The following conversation happened. Hey OP, how close are you to fixing that bike? I don't really know. I think the back tire may be warped. If so, I might need a new one. Well, you have two bikes, and so I was thinking that you get that one fixed, maybe I can have it to ride around this summer. It would really help me feel better. Now, I haven't actually lent my bikes out to friends before, as we live in a small town, and honestly, you don't need a car to get from place to place, so most of us just go around on bikes in the summer to save gas. But this man was so sick, he was leaning on the doorframe just to talk to me. I was not about to have him riding one of my bikes and crashing it and getting himself or my bike hurt. I also knew when he crashed it, I would have to fix it right away. So no thank you. Um, I'm not sure that I am comfortable with that. Maybe we could just get you a new $60 one from Walmart. But I don't want one from there. Those bikes are crap and will break so fast. Well, I don't feel comfortable with you on one of my bikes. You are sick, and I think you would crash it, and I know you won't be able to fix it. They're not even your bikes anyway. We bought them for you and your brother, and he didn't want his. Surely you don't need both. Actually, I do. This one needs work, and I still need a way of getting around. Plus, you said those bikes belong to me and my brother, and he didn't want his. So they are mine, unless you want to give me the money I put into them back. We bought them, they're ours. No, I spent my money on them. The only thing that is still original from the bike is the frame. I will pay you the $60 if you want, and you can use it to buy your own bike. At this point, my father is red in the face, 
and starts yelling about how I'm so ungrateful and how he never gets to exercise and how it's no big deal, I refuse to budge. Eventually, our mum comes home and hears all of this. Hi, crap you not. He goes to my mother like a toddler who has had his toy car stolen and says that I am refusing to let him use my bike and that it's so bullcrap. My mum, as if she could read my mind, says, why don't we just get you a cheap $60 bike to ride? You only need it to ride around the neighborhood. This made him go ballistic, throwing a fit about how we all had decent bikes except him, which isn't wrong as my mother bought a souped up bike she bought from the bike store when it was on sale for a charity event a few years ago. We pointed out that we both like to go trail riding and ride around town while he only wants to ride around the neighborhood. He said that it shouldn't matter, that he had a right to have a decent bike. Eventually my mother relented and offered to let him use her old bike. Although it's a really old bike, and you'll never guess who's in charge of fixing it up so he can ride it. If nothing else, I was told that once I fixed it up, I wouldn't have to do anything more. I'm only gonna change the tubes as the tires are still good enough, and I'm gonna get the chain greased instead of replaced. If you've bought your kid a bike, I think it would have to be pretty extreme conditions before you take it away from them. Now considering that they put their own money into it, hundreds of dollars, and hours of their own labor, the idea that you still own the bike because, what, you originally purchased it for $60? Seems completely unreasonable. He's transformed it into a new bike, it's not the same bike anymore. This is going to be about my stepmother, who from now on we'll refer to as Rebecca. Everything in this post will be told from my memories as a kid, or things my father has told me after the fact. Anyways, let's get started. My mother and father divorced when I was around 7 years old, and both remarried rather quickly. My mother remarried to one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life. He took the time to raise me as one of his own. And I can only say that over the past 14 years, I've only looked at him as a father. On the other hand, my biological father, who I still love dearly to this day because he only tries his best with me and my younger sister, remarried to Rebecca. I first met Rebecca with my younger sister during one of my father's visitation hours. We saw him every Tuesday and alternating weekends, and she seemed pretty cool. My sister and I liked her immediately. Over weeks turning into months, we saw her much more frequently, until we knew it. My father moved into her house almost an hour away, and not much longer after that, they were married. The wedding was in the house house was huge, and I still look at it as a good memory, with all my dad's side of the family being there. I don't remember much of Rebecca's family being there, but we'll get to that soon. It wasn't long after the wedding till I noticed things were changing. Whenever my sister and I were spending weekends at the house, she would never come out of her room. Whenever I had a hockey game, or my father took my sister and I, she would always say, Oh, I'm really busy, maybe next time. I didn't think much of it because all seemed the same. It continued like that. She would only come out of the room unless my father and her got into a screaming match about spending time with us. It only went downhill from there. Now, my father has a big cushy corporate job and sometimes he would get called into the office on weekends or he would have to go on a surprise business trip for a day or two. So it left my sister and I with Rebecca. One thing Rebecca was notorious for was being an enormous neat freak and punishment if we didn't keep our rooms clean to her liking. She would keep us locked up in separate rooms with no food or water for an entire day, threaten us that if we told our dad, we would be in more trouble. That kind of thing would only happen when he was gone for the day. Then arguments would start to happen between myself and her. My sister was still too young to defend herself, but I was getting to the age where I was getting a little rebellious and stood up for myself. Rebecca and I would get into arguments about stupid things. The one time we got into a fight was about me being on my PlayStation too long. Again, stupid. She took it to the point where she called my mother a horrible person and my stepfather a pig. He was a cop at the time. That got me to back off, being I turned into a crying mess, not knowing what to say. 
Every time an argument would persist, I would still never tell my dad, in fear of getting in trouble with him. Now, what solidified my hatred for this woman, and it still boils in me to this day, I didn't learn this until years later. One night, spending the weekend with my father and Rebecca, my sister and I were playing around in the little room we spend most of the weekends, where we had our games, the TV, etc. My sister flopped on the couch, only for that to be followed by a blood-curdling scream. I picked her up to see her arm bleeding and a broken piece of glass sticking out her arm. My father and Rebecca rushed in, and my dad asked what happened, and I told him exactly what happened. Rebecca had the audacity to claim I was lying and that I was playing too rough with her and broken one of the picture frames hanging on the wall. I started crying and my father and her got into a small screaming match while he was carrying my sister to the car to take her to the ER. But it doesn't end there, no. I stayed home because I want to be nowhere near Rebecca. It wasn't until years later my father told me what happened on the ride to the hospital. Rebecca admitted that a picture frame had broken over the couch and she didn't even clean it up. She knew that my sister and I were always in that room and the straw that broke the camel's back. In the end, this hurt my father the most when they got the medical bill and she said, Who's going to pay for this? in the most condescending, nasty tone. When my father told me, he went into a rage about how she was his daughter and he was going to pay for it, and how dare she question that fact. It wasn't long after that incident, my father divorced Rebecca. Good timing too, because I was getting ready for freshman year of high school. Dealing with her and the kids in high school probably wouldn't have mixed well. There's a lot of things I've left out for the sake of time and such, but I hope this gave you guys an understanding of how crazy this woman was. And even my father tells me to this day, he would have gone through the divorce with my mother 10 times over they continued to be married to Rebecca. You know how sometimes people say the saying, Oh, they're 10 times the man you'll ever be. It feels like this is the anti version of this. She's 10 times the divorce of another woman. I don't know if she just thought, oh I can marry this guy and well, the kids aren't really involved in his life so I don't have to worry about them. If you're marrying somebody who has kids, that's part of the deal. And if you don't want that, then don't sign up for it. She not only created her own misery, but she caused trouble for everybody else involved. So unnecessarily. I'm female 21, and part of a group for young and young adult carers. Most of us in the group look after a relative in one way or another, and all of us are between the ages of 9 and 21. Some only have to do household cleaning and cooking, while others have to take people to doctor's meetings, give medication, and deal with talking to people over the phone, etc. Some kids even start doing these things as young as 3. The only break a lot of the kids get is the once a month meeting set by our local unpaid carers charity. They have video games and art supplies, among other things that the kids use to help them to be a kid for a couple of hours. As I'm one of the oldest ones, I act almost as a volunteer, and actually plan to once I'm 22, during these meetings. The meetings are split in two, 9 to 16 and 16 plus, and I help out in both. One day I was playing Minecraft with one of the younger kids, and he was complaining that his younger brother, a foster kid, got way more presents than him at Christmas. Our local authority does an appeal every year for Christmas presents to give to foster kids, and he was annoyed about it. He gets like loads of presents off his foster family, a bunch off my mum, and then like 20 off that appeal. I'll get 20 if I'm lucky. He got a Switch last year, I was told I wasn't allowed one. It sucks. And I had to agree. A bunch of kids watching us also got involved in the rant, with one even saying they had to buy their own presents because their single mother couldn't go shopping without them there. I spoke to the staff about it and we all agreed that the next Christmas, the one just gone, we would get surprise presents for these kids. We got in touch with a local radio station and a bunch of local companies who agreed to sponsor our campaign and even have the group organizer, G, speak on air about the group. She did have to mention we were all over nine, so no baby toys. We still got a couple, but we just gave those to the younger siblings of some kids. The response was massive. 
We were not expecting the amount of presents we actually got. There was enough for at least 10 gifts per carer, and maybe more. I offered to lend a hand wrapping the gifts up and sorting them into groups. Suitable for girls, suitable for boys, unisex, younger carer, older carer, etc. And because I knew most of the kids and what they would like best, I was told I had to be there. We ended up having to wrap them in a community center because there were so many gifts to get through. Unfortunately, we had to share the center with a mother's meeting group for single, unemployed mothers. We didn't mind, as long as they were okay with us listening to Christmas music in the background in November. After their meeting had ended, a couple of them came into our room to see what we were up to. They asked us a couple questions and a few offered to help out until they had to pick their kids up for school. G, being way too trusting, agreed. This is where things go downhill. FM the foster mother, holding up a couple video games. Oh my gosh, my kids would love these. Would you mind if I took them home for my kids? Sorry, but these gifts are specifically for our young carers. But these are clearly for older kids. They even say 7 plus on them. Yes, and all of our kids are over 9. These gifts were given to us by the public for our carers. But my oldest boy is a foster kid. That makes no difference, ma'am. These are for our kids first. But he's had such a bad life. He deserves a gift. How would you feel being taken away from your family and moved from place to place all your life? This is where I had to step in. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but the foster kids already get plenty. Not only do you as a foster parent get extra money for gifts for each foster child, they also receive gifts from the council's Christmas campaign. Our kids don't get anything. Some even go without gifts because their parents can't go out and buy them. We set this up because our kids were complaining that foster kids got parents and they got nothing. <laughs> parents. <laughs> presence. <laughs> yes, exactly. Possum here is right. Now if you don't stop with this nonsense, then I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Also Bob, one of the staff who is massive, can check her bag. Can you check her bags to make sure she hasn't tried taking anything? Foster mum then proceeded to remove at least 13 different gifts, including makeup, art supplies, books, and even a video game from her bag. She pretty much ran out of the hall. I had a good laugh with the staff about it later. The kids all were super happy, and we even have videos of some of the kids and teens on Christmas morning opening the presents, which we showed at the annual review. Not a dry eye in the room. Oh, and the video games FM wanted went to the boy who complained originally, and the staff all chipped in to get him a Switch. It was a second-hand refurbished one, but he loved it. He hasn't stopped bugging me about Animal Crossing recently, but I don't mind as long as he's doing well. It must be so easy for them to act entitled because if you're a foster mom, yes, it's a great thing that you adopted a child in need. But if you use that as an excuse for your entitlement, that doesn't make you a good person. In fact, quite the opposite. There are a lot of people who adopt children for their own selfish reasons. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.